A tale as old as time, a song as old as rhyme, but which one is the beauty and which one is the beast, and how likely am I to be sued by Disney for saying that? I'm Rob from Barefoot Gaming, and it is time to pit the Thrustmaster T248 against the Logitech G923. Plus, let's learn what has changed since their last iteration. I mean, if you already have a G29 or if you have a T300, are these even worth your time? Buckle up, viewers, as it is time for round two. Somebody ring the bell already. Now, in case you missed it, we've already done a Thrustmaster versus Logitech wheel review. And I am not going to go through all the differences between the T150, the T300, the G29, the G920. That's been done. If you want to check that video out, I will put a link in the top corner as well as in the description. But I get asked all the time what my thoughts are on the newest hardware by these two companies. And my only goal with this video is to hopefully equip you with the info to decide which one might be right for you or if either are right for you for that matter. Now, I have tested all of these wheels side by side in the exact same games. I have recorded the noise differences in both force feedback as well as the clickety clickety clackety-ness of the paddle shifters. I need to also clarify that all testing was done with default settings out of the box. I wanted to keep this as fair as possible and so without further ado, let us begin with the Logitech G923. Super quick, the G923 is the new model that replaces the G920 and the G29. The differences between those two were primarily one being Xbox compatible and the other being PlayStation, although the G29 did have a few extra buttons, wheels, and actually even lights on the top. I digress. Let's start with the fact that the G923 TrueForce is the same for all platforms. It's also important to mention that the G923 looks almost identical to the G29, aside from coloration and the logo in the center of the wheel. Now, I guess if you're an Xbox user, now you'll have access to the rotation dial and rev lights that we're missing on the G920. But I mean, even the pedals are exactly the same. They look exactly the same, but that's the aesthetics. We already know that Logitech has upgraded the force feedback based on all of its true force marketing, but what does that mean exactly? You see, wanting to really test this out and give you the most accurate and best info, I tested game after game, switching out the G29 to the G923. And the actual force feedback of the wheel is, well, it's still the exact same helical gear-driven wheel system. Still a 900 degree operating range and there is no noticeable difference in how the wheel pulls from left to right and vice versa. What they have done, however, is add a vibration function to the wheel itself. That, my friends, is the power of friendship. I mean, the power of true force. That's what I meant, true force. And what is this power? Well, true force aims to replicate the vibration you feel in the chassis of the car while driving in real life. Think of it like the force feedback portion helps you feel the bumps and the pull from the grip of your tires on the road. While the true force, it sounds weird, converts the physics and engine audio into vibrations you feel in the wheel itself. How much that adds to gameplay is, well, this is gonna be something some people love and others will, well, others will not love it. After racing multiple tracks, I found it numbed my palms as it made them feel tingly, even after letting go for the wheel for a bit, as in minutes after playing, which some might say is another added layer of immersion. I personally liken this to having a force feedback gun that makes your ears ring for just a little while after shooting it. Yes, it is more real and more accurate, but I'm not sure if I'm enjoying that added feature. A big plus to this is that these settings are completely adjustable in the Logitech G-Hub software. You can turn either the torque or audio effects up or down to your choosing, as well as the other force feedback settings, like your operating range, your sensitivity, uh, the centering spring strength, all of those can be adjusted in the software. The negative is that if you do enjoy the vibration in that wheel, as of the time of this video, there are only eight PC games five Xbox games, and seven PlayStation games that support it. Otherwise, that feature is just not available, and it's like playing with the G29. Since this was apparently very appreciated in our last wheel review, we made sure to record exactly how loud the force feedback itself was by driving our vehicle into the same spot on the same map with a mic sitting directly below the wheels. Check it out.
Speaking of noise, let's show off how loud the paddle shifters are. Again, comparing the G29 and the G923 with the mics the same distance away. Now, how about the pedals? The G923 and the G29 pedals look identical, aside from the logo. However, Logitech has said they have upgraded the potentiometer and made the brake feel smoother. I cannot speak to the potentiometer, and I am by no means any expert, but it is really difficult to tell the difference between the brakes side by side. I think I can tell, but I don't know if that's psychosomatic at this point. I have no reason to not believe them. I'm just saying it's really tough to tell the difference between the two. What Logitech has is they have a little grippy thing that'll flip out underneath that helps it grip to the carpet, which Thrustmaster does not have. Of course, before we can discuss which I would recommend, we need to dig into the Thrustmaster T248 itself. The T248 sits somewhere between the T150 and the T300, but personally, I feel it is much closer to the T150. In fact, I think they should have called it the T200-ish, but clearly no one at Thrustmaster asked me. Also of note, as of this moment in time, the T248 is for PC and PlayStation only, with the Xbox PC version coming in the very soon. Using a hybrid drive system combines gear and belt driven tech with a built-in LCD display that not only shows things like your speed or RPM, previous lap time, race position, etc. Assuming it is one of the eight games that supports this feature, this is of course less useful when you're in virtual reality, but for everyone else it is pretty darned cool. I should also mention that a number of supported games should keep growing going forward. Another thing it does is let you adjust the strength of your force feedback on the fly, or on the drive, that's probably more accurate. And again, all within that LCD screen. Thrustmaster themselves say the hybrid drive force feedback system delivers up to 70% more power than the T150, as well as their competitors, which of course, well, I mean, they're referring to Logitech series. I don't know how to measure that claim, but I would say it is for sure at least a little bit stronger than Logitech G923 or the T150. Time to show off the noise levels of the force feedback in action. The Thrustmaster T248 also ships with new T3PM magnetic pedals, which Thrustmaster claims are 20% more stable than their predecessor, the T3PA. Thrustmaster always with the percentages, apparently. The pedal heads, or faces, the part your foot presses on, are all entirely metal and are larger than the previous versions, making it easier to hit the pedals. The base is still plastic, but the bottom still has holes for mounting to a rig. If you have one and it has little rubber feet to help you grip to the floor if you don't. It does not have the cool little TT things that Logitech has. The brake pedal has an option of adjusting not only the angle of the pedal, but comes with a replacement black spring in case you want more resistance. But even out of the box, the resistance on this brake is like crazy stiff which again, can be a good thing or a bad thing depending on what you're looking for. Now comes the part where I make people that love either the Logitech or the Thrustmaster series angry. It is time for my honest opinion. The comment section is braced for your angry messages, so let's do this. The Logitech G923 is not a huge step up from the G29 or the G920. The design and torque is exactly the same. With design, I understand not to fix what isn't broken, but that nothing seems to have been upgraded from the gear system to me was a letdown. Now let me clarify, there is nothing wrong with the wheel, and many people even prefer the more notchy or loose feel of the gear system, so that's a win for them. The build quality of the leather feel to the wheel is incredible in your hands, but speaking of feeling good in your hands, I personally am not a fan of those wheel vibrations. Tingly hands to me do not an accurate simulation make. But I am certain many out there would disagree with me on this. The thing is, even if you do disagree, it currently only works on a very few list of games. If the T248 is meant to replace the T300, it has another thing coming. Not to equate weight with quality alone, but the T248 feels like a toy compared to the T300 or the G923 weight wise. Plus the T300 is belt driven, the T248 is very much, well, it's not. The leather style wrap on the Logitech covers the front and back where Thrustmaster decided covering the outer edge with a rubber style feel was enough, but it means you feel plastic and screw holes everywhere else. I think the digital display is actually very cool and as long as the game you're playing supports it, well that's a pretty major plus. Taking price out of it and I had to choose between the G923 and the T248, it would be a tough decision. I personally prefer the force feedback of the Thrustmaster but the actual feel of the Logitech wheel. It, well, it feels miles better ahead in quality. 
And I mean, I can always turn off the real force if it's starting to bug me too much. At least that's an option. I like the Thrustmaster pedal setup better based entirely on the size of the pads your feet press alone. But the shifters are so freaking loud that if I were to use the paddle shifters, that would drive me bonkers in a very short period of time. In the end, you need to decide which is the most important to you. The feel of the build quality, the force feedback, the extra toys like real force or the on-screen display, they are both good wheels and I don't think you'll be sorry with either choice. In the end, hopefully I've equipped you better to make your choice. But if you have questions, feel free to leave them below and I will do my very best to answer them for you. I want to thank you all very much for not only sharing Barefoot's previous videos, but appreciate the work that goes into these. You are the ones that make this worthwhile and I genuinely thank you for it. Like, share, subscribe, and if there is something you'd like to see us tackle in the future, well, I'll do my best to do so. Thank you so much for watching and I will talk to you again really, really soon. See ya.